to see you again. Uh, so today, as promised, I'm going to tell you about language. Um, <clears throat> so um, uh, it's, this is about computation in the brain. And language is a very interesting common friend. Okay, so you know, because uh, uh, brain people are, are interested in language about one tenth as much as they should be, and I'll, I'm going to argue about that. Uh, and of course, language people are very interested in the brain. And uh, computer science and the brain has had a very interesting and slightly tumultuous relationship. So, so I'm going to tell you all about that. Uh, so, uh, <clears throat> Uh, introduction, I'm going to do a, a, a French scene. So, you know, the French Academy has said that uh, you should never ponder the origins of language, okay? You know, but, but I'm going to ponder the origins of language. Uh, uh, some linguistic theory and connections to computer science. What you know about the language and the brain. And I'm going to end up um, with the proposed uh, brain architecture for language based on assemblies, what I talked about last time even though I'm going to, uh, to uh, remind you of the, of, the, of the relevant parts. All right, without further ado. Um, uh, here is, uh, here is uh, one thing. Uh, every time I tell my, my, my neuroscientist friends that I'm working on language, I get uh, sort of... Uh, unanimous uh, disapproval okay you know basically they told me you know why so you know language is the hardest thing that any brain has done uh, why study language why don't you wait until you understand the brain and then we'll sit back light up a cigar and think about language okay you know so and i think that's that's not that's not uh, that's not uh, right okay because i think that language is an immense opportunity, okay? And, uh, and it really enhances our chances of understanding the brain. Because, first of all, something that I haven't talked about, but I hope it's obvious, that, uh, that uh, our brain is uh, basically determined by our environment, okay? Uh, a bra our brain is a child of our environment, is a child of this planet. Okay, in a, in, in, a, in a million ways, okay? So, you know, but, but uh, uh, the point is that in a boring planet, there would be no brain, okay? Uh, and and uh, we are shaped, our brain is shaped by the planet. Our, uh, the brain is shaped by our environment. Language is an environment. Very interesting, it's an environment that we created, but then we had to face. You know, every generation has to learn language, okay? And therefore, it's an environment that knows our brain well. And it has adapted to our brain very well, okay? By studying the language, we study our brain. Uh, our, our brain has not changed since we started language. I mean... It's a different, there are different brains, okay, so, you know, 80,000 years ago and now. But the point is that the genome that creates the brain is essentially the same, okay? There has been selection, all right? So, you know, uh, of course. But, uh, but uh, and has been also selection by, so, and there has been also a random walk. There have been like a million random walks. But the point is that fundamentally it's the same brain, okay? It is our, the language that had to adapt to the brain, okay? I'm pretty sure that, uh, that uh, uh, language has optimized for many things, for communication, for efficiency, for information, and so on. But predominantly, a lot, language has optimized so that babies can learn it easily and well, okay? That, that's, that's an extremely important thing, all right? So, so... Uh, uh, and has taken full advantage of the brain because the brain was there from the beginning. Okay, so it's an invaluable, valuable lens for studying the brain, and uh, and thankfully there is a real deluge of uh, of uh, recent experiments, and I'm going to fit very exciting experiments. That's all you know happened in the last three four years that I'm going to tell you about. Something is brewing. We're about to understand many things about the language. 
Okay. So, uh, uh, how did language come about? Uh, uh, some, you know, some say two, some say three, some say four, six. I mean, I'll show you, I'll show you the phylogenetic tree. Uh, uh, million years before the present, the homo group separated from the chimps. Uh, homo habilis, floresiensis, this is an incredible species. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's a cousin. Uh, uh, it had, uh, it, it, it's a recent cousin. Uh, it had a tiny brain and thrived. Okay, it had a, a brain that was one third of our brain. Still thrived. And it was also a third our size. Uh, <coughs> Neanderthal, Heidelberg, Denisovan, Homo erectus, Homo ergaster, Homo sapiens. Uh, so uh, that's us. All the same sapiens seems to have had language. Okay? Uh, how do we know? Well, we don't. But, uh, but uh, uh, we have learned, and we have, I guess, wished and, and deducted, deduced, that, uh, that uh, language is coterminous with other things, like symbolic thinking, like sim symbolic life. And uh, as a result, uh, language usually comes with things like art, okay, symbolic art, and uh, or uh, uh, burial, okay, you know, and, and so on. I mean, so uh, these things, uh, uh, symbolic behavior, uh, uh, has not has been missing. You know, we have not found it in other species. We have not found it more than eighty thousand years ago. Okay. And as a result, we think that that language has has come eight thousand years ago. But uh, you know, there are some people, including me, who believe that uh, it came uh, uh, a million years ago. Okay, you know, but but uh, but but stayed silence for a very long time. So I'll tell you about it. Uh, so in eight hundred uh, uh, kilo years uh, before present, the first figure it art in, in Africa. And did, you know, the, the, the hypothesis is that about the same time, or a little later, or a little before, uh, language, uh, uh, language as we know it, language, spoken language, uh, uh, developed. Uh, the caveats, okay, about studying language. As I told you, in 1866, uh, uh, French Academy dictated the, that, uh, that, uh, that language, the origins of language should never be debated, okay? And, uh, and uh, you understand why they would, might have done that. Uh, they, they, uh, uh, they uh, very reasonably concluded that there can be no scientific evidence for any argument on this, on this, on this subject, and therefore there should be no debate. Uh, incidentally, a little later than 1866, a famous chemist. Uh, uh, it, it was. It was. It was. Uh, uh, it, it was uh, probably in the, in the 1880s or 90s, uh, and I forget the name of the chemist, but said, people say that we are going to solve all problems, that they are not unsolvable problems. I think, I think that's nonsense. Of course there are unsolvable problems. For example, what is the chemical, con uh, what is the chemical con composition of Sirius? We will never find this out. We will never go there. It's impossible to find out. You know, and that's 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 uh, ten years before before spectroscopy. Okay, so so um, you know what I'm saying that that problems that seem unsolvable, they may not be. Okay, you know you know that's that's uh, that's uh, okay. Uh, and uh, and uh, and uh, 150 you know 150 years is a very long time uh, in science. Okay, so uh, so I I am not I don't have much guilt about violating the ban of. The French Academy. Okay, so um, uh, here is what Noam Chomsky said, which is a little more, uh, you know, uh, which I, I, I listen to more, more, uh, uh, more carefully. It is an irresistible question because it's about us. Okay, uh, I know that, but this does not make it a scientific question. Okay, excellent. You know, the the fact that that scientists are interested in it, it does not mean that science should be interested in it. Okay, that's that's. Uh, if there is no way to find out by science, then there is no way. Okay, so that's 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 a, that's a, that's a very sensible thing, and I, and I I support it. Uh, uh, here is what 
perhaps uh, uh, the, 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 the brightest mind uh, in, in last centuries, uh, in, in the last 50 years uh, evolution said, if you don't have a related species with a similar trait, you have the problem of novelty. You see what I'm saying? Uh, there is no other species that that uh, that uh, that has uh, that has uh, 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 language, and therefore, uh, how can you how can you how can you uh, study its origins? How, how you know it's basically it's a random mutation that happened at some point could have happened everywhere anywhere. So that's that's the evolutionary perspective. Uh, he, you know, here's something else. Uh, is human fascination with language and exercise in speciesism? Speciesism, I don't know if you're familiar with the term, is the, is the counterpart of racism when you're talking about species. It is a bias to believe that, uh, that your species, and I guess, uh, you know, uh, I mean about us, is uh, superior and so on and does not have, and, and other species do not have the same moral rights as, as we do. Uh, in any event, uh, uh, Stephen Pinker, uh, gave us a nice metaphor. Imagine elephants admiring their trunk, okay? Say, you know, obviously we are an amazing species because we have this thing. I mean, uh, look around you. There is nothing like that. 700 muscles, you know, amazing coordination, you know, so, you know, uh, millions of uh, enervating, um, of, of nerves are enervating them. Uh, okay, well, the anteaters and the tapirs uh, have some, ah, but that's nothing, okay? We are, we are obviously best, okay? You know, so, you know, that's, uh, that's sort of a little, a little self-satirizing um, uh, for our species uh, 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 point of view. You know, it's, it's, an interesting, it's an interesting way to think about it. Uh, so, uh, incidentally, uh, I don't know if you know this, but, but, but uh, there have been reports and, in fact, videos Suggesting that elephants bury their dead, uh, so uh, that's another sort of another uh, very advanced, very advanced, uh, how do you call it, very advanced um, uh, trait. Okay, uh, that's an amazing book. It came out last year, uh, uh, "Language and Evolution: Why Only Us," written by none other than Noam Chomsky and uh, and uh, Robert Berwick. Uh, uh, I have spent a lot of time talking to both of them. Robert Bergo is my friend, and and he uh, and uh, uh, they, uh, you know, Noam uh, Chomsky violated uh, his uh, his own uh, his own uh, uh, for, uh, 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 dictum that that that, that uh, there is no question. You know, if it's not a scientific question, it's not a question. Uh, by the way, another very extremely useful book. Uh, just came out by Angela Friderici, an Italo-German uh, 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 neuroscientist who is uh, and Chomskyan, who is interested in language. He has a foreword uh, by Noam Chomsky. Uh, I'm not saying I'm, I'm, you know, I said carefully uh, a very useful book. I find it very useful. I'm not recommending it. Uh, I don't like the way it's written. Okay, so you know, it's 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 written like. Uh, uh, a scientist who tries to impress the audience that uh, that uh, that uh, that uh, they can talk a very advanced language that nobody else understands. Okay, you know. So, um, uh, so one of my plans is one of these days to write a book. A big a third of it would be rewriting this book in a way that people can understand. Okay, you know. So, so, so I'm, I'm traveling with this book these days. Okay, so you know, I'm, I'm, I'm reading it very carefully. Okay, so uh, in any event, so. Uh, how language come, came about? Amazing question. Chomsky and Berwick think that there was there was a, a major there was a big bang. Okay, uh, you know the, there are big bangs in you know major mutations in evolution. You know, uh, uh, what is uh, what would you say is our most valuable organ? Uh, the brain, right? Or the eyes, or uh, what else? It's not. Our valuable, most valuable organ, organ was e evolved 65 million ago by a massive uh, migration of 1,500 genes from uh, proto mammals, from non placental mammals uh, that created uh, us. So the, our most valuable organ is the placenta. Okay, without it, <laughs> we cannot exist, right? So. Uh, so the placenta did 
uh, did, uh, did uh, you know, the language is another organ, and uh, it could have been, uh, could have evolved by, 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 ma by massive mutation. And I'm going to tell you what evidence we have of that. Or was it gradual progress? We do have evidence of a ma massive mutation, okay? And, and uh, not a massive mutation, of a massive biological event that is unique to us. And I, I'll, I'll come, to you, come to it. Perhaps we had language in some weak sense far before 800,000 years ago. Maybe around uh, half a million years ago. Uh, perhaps we just used for a long time. There is, there is a nice book by C. Corbalis. Uh, yes? Uh, uh, I'll talk to that. I'll, I'll speak about that briefly, but uh, I don't want to waste much time. It's, it's, it's a settled question. Okay, so you know, no, no other animals have language. Uh, uh, and, but I mean, no, it will be abundantly clear as, 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 as I advance. So, uh, but I'm, go, I'm going to address this question. Uh, perhaps, you know, so Corvallis thinks that, uh, that, uh, uh, we gestured much before speaking, which agrees with, with the theory of that, that Chomsky and I and Berwick share. Uh, so what is, a weak, what is the weak sense? Corbali says it's signing. Uh, I'm pretty sure that signing happened and, and uh, sort of, you know, uh, unarticulated cries happened a lot. But uh, I think that, that the weak sense is inner language. If you think about it, uh, who is the person you talk most to? Do you know? It's yourself. Okay? We talk to ourselves much more than we talk to anybody else. Okay? And uh, our life is a continuous uh, discussion with ourselves. Okay? So, you know, we, 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 are, we are talking, I mean, in articulated sentences to ourselves. Okay? And, and, and uh, I'm sure, you know, not I'm sure, I hypothesize, Chomsky hypothesizes, that this has been going on for... Uh, for uh, more than half a million years, okay? Uh, so, a hierarchical structure, thought, and inner language uh, is, uh, is, uh, is uh, something that could have exist, existed for much longer than, than articulated language, okay? All right. What is needed for language? For a long time, we thought that uh, prohibitively sophisticated muscular, muscular system in the mouth, face, tongue is necessary. Uh, and but apparently that's not true because biologists seem to think that many apes are ready. Okay, that uh, that uh, if they had the rest of the apparatus, they are completely ready to start speaking to us. Okay, if they, if they had the other hardware, the other needed hardware, uh, uh, or is it all in the mind? I think it's all in the mind, in particular in the brain. Uh, when did you become competent of of you know? Uh, Corbalis thinks that we may have switched to speech long after we could have, and which is, coincides with, with uh, the other theory. And why was language of thought? So here is an interesting question. Uh, the language of thought, the capability for language of thought, uh, you know, uh, uh, mother in Africa somewhere, maybe, uh, maybe 600,000 years ago, gave birth to a baby that had a mutation. Okay, why did this mutation conquer all of Africa? That's the question. I mean, there must be a reason, okay? And the only reason I can think is planning, okay? That if you can do hierarchical thoughts of, uh, of arbitrary recursion and depth, uh, you are capable of very detailed planning. And this gives, uh, gives, I believe, this gives an amazing evolutionary advantage. Okay? Uh, so, uh, so this is, uh, again, okay? We are in, we are in, uh, we are, uh, we are uh, walking in the sand here, okay? If not in the bog, okay? Uh, this, uh, this is a prohibited, uh, until recently prohibited uh, 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 subject, right? I mean, so, of course, we are going to be speculative, right? I mean, and, and, and what I'm telling you is speculation. Uh, I can tell you that it's, uh, that it's uh, one is speculation that follows a lot of thought, and that uh, I know very clever people who agree with this speculation, okay? So, so that's, that's uh, uh, okay. Uh, in particular, 
Consider a girl in England and a girl in Japan, okay? They speak completely different languages. And, uh, and for example, sort of, you know, the, the uh, Jap Japanese, uh, it's, it's a head last uh, language, okay? Sort of, you know, the, the subject of the, of the, you know, is, comes last. I mean, you know, there, there are incredible differences between English and Japan. How did this English difference come about, okay? It's 4,000 mothers. The difference between uh, Japanese and English came in 4,000 small steps, each being a mother teaching to her daughter a slightly different form of the language than she learned from her mother, okay? And this created the difference between Japanese and English. If you think about it for two minutes, your world around you will start spinning, okay? Greek and Hindi, it's probably 2,000 mothers, if not less. Okay? Is there, is there a notion of geographical distance between... Uh, there is, there is a, linguists have done everything. I mean, no, there is, geography is probably not the, not the best, uh, not the best uh, 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 counselor here. Uh, 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 there is, uh, there is, um, uh, there is, uh, you know, there are, uh, there are very interesting linguistic metrics of how, how far different, uh, how, how far languages are, uh, and what constitutes a different language. Okay, so you know, uh, this is all empirical and so on, but 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 it's it's and it changes with time. Uh, but of course, uh, ge geography plays a role. Okay, you know, uh, uh, you know what Pinker says in one of his books is that if an alien comes to uh, to Earth, uh, uh, they would uh, go fly back and report that uh, they also have this communication speed, uh, uh, system based on sound waves, and they have a, a coding uh, technique, and uh, they all speak, they all do the same. They all, you know, it's it's identical, except for some minor differences in style and 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 and. Uh, detail, uh, except for Korean, okay? <laughs> that, uh, you know, Pinker feels that Korean is very different from the rest, okay? So, okay? Um, in any event. What do you mean? What are these metrics which distinguish them from? For example, when the German is spoken in a very different way, then English is. Right. So then, then the English and German are in, in, indistinguishable in these metrics. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Right. So, um, so here is here is the, our history, um, as it's speculated. Uh, so, uh, uh, so what happened is is uh, is uh, uh, we left Africa. Uh, there are there are uh, two routes, okay, sort of you know, uh, uh, two suspected routes. One is here, the other is there. Uh, uh, you know about the the, the 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 controversy about India. Uh, uh, when when did it reach India? You know, it probably reached India around 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 uh, uh, 55, uh, 60,000 years ago. But I mean, no, what route did it take, and what I mean, no. Uh, uh, then, uh, then uh, Europe uh, was uh, was forty thousand years ago. The Americas twenty, the Arctic uh, ten, uh, uh, you know Alaska and, 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 the, and, the, and, the, and the Siberian Arctic. Polynesia only two thousand years ago. So uh, and and uh, was a single migration? Was it multiple? We know it's multiple. Okay, so you know we have. We have evidence from uh, from the Neanderthal trace in us, in, in in the rest of us in Europe, because Neanderthals were in Europe. Uh, uh, so you probably you you people have no uh, no Neanderthal blood. I have, I have, uh, I have, I have about uh, uh, thirty percent more than average. Okay, you know, so so you know, the average is is uh, is uh, two, two two point something percent. I have three. Okay, you know, so um, but. Uh, uh, average among Europeans, uh, but uh, 
so um, <clears throat> for you know so we know we know from genetic from a genetic uh, you know by studying the genetics of Neanderthals uh, and and their influence on, on, on us that there were multiple multiple uh, you know that there were multiple waves there were multiple waves uh, divided sort of you know separated by perhaps 10,000 years that that, 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 that that Africans went to Europe uh, okay so uh, uh, in fact I mean you know Tongan Hawaiian girls there are only a few dozen mothers apart okay and these are two completely different languages okay because separation is a very you know you know what are the two the two closest languages in the planet I mean I don't know if they're two closest but I think they are uh, 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 that are definitely could distinct languages but they are very close I mean you know, I'm sure there is a counterexample in India, okay? But but uh, but uh, but what is considered by linguists the two closest uh, relatives are uh, English and Scots, okay? There is there is a Scots language, okay? So you know that it has a national poet, it has sort of you know, uh, 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 and 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 uh, 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 it's uh, you know you cannot understand it. You cannot you know. Basically, one metric is that you cannot understand more than something like seventy percent, okay, you know, uh, that the, uh, of the of the of the language, but uh, but it's uh, but it's extremely close. Okay, um, good. All right. Was there a neural big bang? Uh, and I think there was. And you are looking at it. Uh, okay. So. Remember the remember the area that, that President Trump showed us the, 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 the that's the the medial temporal lobe okay this is the superior temporal gyrus okay and this is near the premotor cortex and these are two areas uh, that are called Broca's area okay Wernicke's area is here somewhere and these are two extremely powerful nerve fi fibers that go essentially from Wernicke's area, I'll, I'll tell you what it is, basically it is, uh, it is uh, uh, how, how language uh, uses words, uh, to Broca's area, which basically is uh, how syntax, how hierarchical structures like sentences are made. And, uh, and uh, this is how this looks like, okay? And this is sort of, you know, a, a depiction from, from, uh, from uh, uh, electronic the, the recording. Uh, there is uh, another electronic kind of recorder that I didn't show you, which uh, basically uh, tells us uh, how nerves uh, operate. Okay, so you know what uh, what what is the how electric current flows in axons. Okay, and this gives you this incredibly thick uh, 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 sort of uh, sheath of fibers, which is called uh, arquatum fasciculum. Uh, fasciculum means sheath. Okay. Uh, fa sorry, fasciculum, uh, you know, the word fascist comes from that, okay? Uh, fasciculum means a, a sheaf, so like, like a bunch of, of, of arrows, okay? You know, so, uh, uh, and, and, uh, and uh, it is because it's sort of an incredibly dense uh, 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 fiber, or, uh, you know, the dense sheaf of fiber, fibers, and, uh, and, and, what, uh, and what it does, you know, it's wide, you see, uh, we never see such huge white uh, white space in our brain, but it's here. Uh, it's white because it's full of uh, of axons. Okay, I mean oh, the axons are white. All right. So uh, uh, and uh, and uh, uh, the amazing thing is that this is on our left brain, or if you are left-handed and woman on the right brain. Okay, and uh, only. The, the other one is a little, you know, is, is also exaggerated, but maybe 40% less. Okay? Uh, this, we are not aware of any other asymmetry in the brain of any animal, of any mammal. Okay? This is the only asymmetry we know in mammals, in the brain. All right? And it happens in the language hemisphere. And it joins the two language areas that we have known for 150 years. Give me a break. That, that, that's worth something. Okay. That, that, that's, that, that's a lot of accumulation of evidence. Okay. Uh, I believe that this was, this was, uh, this was a recent mutation. 
and I speculate that this is a recent, recent mutation, and that it is the basis for our language, uh, for our language uh, uh, ability. Any questions? Yes, yes, yes. It's uh, sort of amazing. It, uh, uh, I forget now, but it affects it in a really weird way. Uh, it's, um, uh, we have, they have studied this a lot and affects it in a, in a, in a very strange way, which I don't remember. In other words, it's something between Broca's Afa. Okay, sorry. Uh, you can articulate sentences, uh, you, with, with difficulty. Your words, it's so this is, it's a, it's a slight mixture of Broca aphasia and Wernicke aphasia. But its main thing is that you cannot repeat what you are told to, to repeat. You are unable to repeat. Uh, okay, so okay, I remember. So that that's that's what that's the kind of aphasia that this that this thing produces. Aphasia means uh, an inability to speak. Okay, uh, and you, that's of course the uh, you know you can tell that 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 the, that, the, that the questioner is is neuroscientist because that's what all neuroscientists think immediately. Okay. What happens if you lead on that? Okay, you know that's that's uh, that's how neuroscientists know anything. Uh, you know before before the current experiment. Okay, uh, good. So, had enough of that? You know, I'm really excited about this. I can go on for another two hours on that. Okay, you know. So this is this is uh, this is. Uh, uh, I think it's staring us in the eye. Okay, it tells us something very important. Okay. Uh, uh, left is dominant for 90% of right-handers, the opposite for female left-handers, and for, for male left-handers, uh, the data is mixed. Um, degree of lateralization, 60% of us have extreme, extreme uh, asymmetry, 20% mild and 20% almost none. Uh, and uh, the question is, what these people, I mean, are they, are they uh, linguistically uh, impoverished? Probably not. I mean, no, pro probably. Uh, so, and the question is, what is the biological event that happens since the chimp? Okay, you know this is this is uh, this is something that we, I mean, the next you know the person who finds this mutation should get a Nobel Prize. Okay, you know, that's but I mean you know, it's clear how what how do you do controlled experiments on this? Okay, so uh, uh, it's not clear. So uh, just to give you, this is uh, this is uh, uh, the hominins. Okay. Hominins, you know who they are? Who, what are there are two species here by. Uh, 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 the chimpanzee and us, okay? Sorry, there is another, another thing called uh, uh, Bolobo, I believe, that is, that is uh, uh, cousin of, a very close cousin of chimpanzee, okay? Uh, but I mean, you know, the, you know who, is, who has the biggest brain after us? It's not the chimpanzee, it's the orangutan. Who is way over there? Okay, uh, the third. Sorry, uh, I mean among apes because there are dolphins, there are whales. Okay, you know, but I mean about apes. Uh, the the second, the third one is the gorilla, and the fourth is the chimpanzee, and the bolobo. Uh, so uh, uh, these are all uh, sort of uh, human-like. Uh, 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 you know. This person had uh, could uh, could uh, create uh, great tools, okay? You know, so you know, but uh, but uh, uh, we uh, we only survived. I mean, <laughs> the stakes were very very high. The stakes were the planet, okay? So 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 we we obliterated them. I mean, that's uh, that's probably what happened, right? <laughs> okay. Uh, so uh, uh, and uh, and uh, and. Um, uh, and here it says 5,000, 5, 5 million years ago. Elsewhere it says four. Uh, when I, when I was in school, it was two. Okay. So, <laughs> you know, once, once, uh, once Elder Spal, the great, the great mathematician said, uh, uh, I'm really very old. You know why? Because uh, when I was in high school, the earth was four million years old. You know, and now the Earth is eight million years old. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, uh, 
<laughs> All right, so this is another. Here is a, 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 a home of fluorescences. Okay, you see, he has had four, four, uh, four gram uh, brain, and uh, basically was uh, was very recent. Okay, so here is here is sapiens, and our brain has been uh, has been uh, growing the last uh, the last uh, two million years. All right. Uh, Sorry. So it's you know the 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 uh, the the weakest of uh, of the hominids were four you know the, the lightest of the hominids were four four forty you know four hundred grams and now it's more than four times that. Here is another one, uh, which I find extremely inspiring. This is uh, the brains. Uh, say, uh, sort of, uh, and you have to realize that the, that the, the magnitude of the brain is more than quadratic, okay, uh, in the size you see, because, because uh, uh, the relative magnitudes. And the reason is that, uh, one, there are, uh, there are, uh, there are, uh, 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 this, is, this is a two-dimensional object that you see one, uh, you know, what am I saying? Uh, you see, yes, I mean, uh, it's a two-dimensional thing, and so you don't don't look at the at the at the, at the width of the, the brains as 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 an, you know it's the square of that. More importantly, these lines you see here, they are creases, creases. Okay, you know where 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 the brain grows, right? I mean, it go, grows inward. Okay, and uh, so this means that 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 the, that the human is uh, not uh, not 1.3 or 0.6 times uh, the chimpanzee, but it's probably Three and a half, four times the chimpanzee. Okay. Uh, what I want you to notice is the colors. Okay. Uh, blue and light blue is is the primary secondary vision. Okay. Uh, this is the this is the primate common ancestor. This is the mammalian common ancestor. Watch. Okay. For the mammalian common ancestor, almost everything was senses. Okay. The blue, uh, green, uh, this is, uh, this is uh, mo motion, this is um, uh, 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 audition, and uh, I forget what this is and what the gray is, okay? But uh, what can the gray be? Um, memory? Maybe. Uh, memory is there. Okay, so, uh, so uh, no, it must be something else. I, I don't know now. Uh, I have to look back at this. At this uh, so... My point is that, uh, and notice also that there are no lines, no black lines in this, uh, in this, okay, there is a black line here in the motor cortex. Uh, but the point is that uh, uh, our brain has grown maybe 10 times, but our non-sensory brain has grown 100 times, okay? The brain that supports the inner life of the mind, the brain that supports the mind, not the senses, okay? Not the motion. This has grown a hundred times. Okay? That's what this picture tells me. Sorry? Uh, I'm looking, I'm looking at, at the growth vis-a-vis -vis this of the white part, okay? And not only of the white part, but also on the black lines in the in the in the white part, okay, which are basically the where the real area is. Okay? And I'm estimating that this to me looks like a a a uh, ten times growth. Okay? But uh, but uh, but the but uh, but uh, uh, in reality it's I think a hundred times growth. Okay, you know that 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 uh, that uh, that uh, of the white part. Uh, and of course, I'm throwing numbers, but I think so. You know, I'm ju I just just wanted to tell you what the qualitative, uh, what the qualitative uh, uh, impression one gets from from these from these uh, from the, from uh, from this data. Uh, by the way, I haven't told you anything about the auditory cortex. Uh, uh, I told you a lot about the visual cortex in the first lecture. The auditory cortex uh, is uh, very unlike the, the visual cortex. For example. It is near the ear, okay, as opposed to, 
uh, okay, uh, as opposed to what you know the, the eyes, which are sort of here. But uh, uh, it has four major parts: A1, A2. You see, uh, people who study the auditory cortex had visual cortex envy, right? I mean, so 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 they they started numbering the the various regions. Uh, imitating the, the numbering of the visual cortex, but at some point it stopped. And then there is a, there is a, there is something called uh, uh, the belt and something called the parabelt, and uh, these are the frequencies. You know, these are these are these are uh, uh, that's a one, that's a two, and that's and that's that's uh, these are the frequencies. Okay, the the the, it, the belt the 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 a one and a two they specialize in frequencies. Okay, uh, red is low and and, 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 and and blue is high, and notice it's not just one belt; it's three. Okay, uh, there are not one not one one uh, scale, but three scales that go up and down and up. Uh, okay, uh, uh, still the signals from the ear go through the thalamus. Okay, because because all all everything except for the olfactory. Uh, 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 signals go there. Specializes in frequencies. The right is uh, is uh, is uh, uh, is is uh, becomes uh, you know when you listen to music, it's more busy than the left. Uh, uh, when uh, when uh, uh, you listen to somebody speaking, uh, the right the left is more more busy than the right. Okay, so because it, it specializes in 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 in. Uh, Temporal aspects, rhythm, and so on. I guess if you are if you are listening to a to a hard rock uh, to, a, to, a, to a metal rock uh, concert, hard metal concert, you know maybe maybe uh, the rhythm is very important also. Okay, you know, so that's uh, okay. Um, all right. Um, so uh, history of, of language and the brain. Uh, uh, by the 1830s, because of lesions, they knew that uh, that language must be in the left hemisphere. Okay, of most people. Uh, 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 in uh, in white 1870s, two doctors in Europe realized that lesions in 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 um, in, uh, in two areas, two particular areas that now bear their names, uh, create uh, uh, difficulties. Broca's area, Broca's area in the production of speech and Wernicke's area in the comprehension of speech, okay? So that's what we believed in about 100 years. 100 years, so what happened? Okay, so here is Broca's area, Broca's area, here is Wernicke's area. And this is, connecting them is their quatum fasciculum. Okay? Uh, uh, 100 years later, we recognize that that's a mistake. That's a mistake and uh, distinction. That's not the real distinction between Broca's area legions uh, and legions and, and Wernicke's area legions. Broca is syntax and grammar. Wernicke is word meaning and selection. Okay, the, for example, Broca aphasia, poor or absent grammar, difficulty forming complete sentences. Cap me instead. Give me the cup or I want the cup. More difficulty using verbs than nouns correctly. In other words, the verb is the king of the sentence. Okay, so. Um, so if you cannot understand syntax, you cannot use the verbs right, okay? Because the verb looks like any other word, okay? Uh, difficulty repeating what has been said by others. This is something, as I told you, that that also happens when uh, when uh, you cut uh, the the or or you or you or you hurt the the, the arquatum fasciculum. Uh, uh, trouble with writing sentences and reading. Problems with full comprehension. Here's an interesting one. Difficulty with following directions. I bet you they have difficulty with making plans. I bet you they have difficulty of remembering stories. You know what I'm saying? That all hierarchical thought goes through Broca's area. That's what I think. It's not just sentences. Uh, uh, and there is frustration when speech is involved. Uh, in contrast, vertical aphasia, string, they string words together to make sentences that not, don't make sense. Make up words that have no meaning, unaware of the mistakes in their speech, deliver words in a normal melodic line, even though the content may not make any sense, articulate their words normally, have difficulty repeating phrases also, and that's shared with the whole, with, add words when trying to repeat someone, 
and uh, interrupt others and speak rapidly. Okay. So, uh, all right. So that's uh, that's uh, that's until uh, until the, the 1800s, and now a huge jump forward. Uh, uh, 1960, there was uh, a very very famous debate between two great scientists, uh, uh, Skinner and Chomsky. Okay. So uh, Skinner was a behaviorist. Uh, this is called a behaviorist structuralist de de debate. So B. F. Skinner believed and showed by experiments that behavior is the result of received reinforcements. Okay, so he was like a, he was like a, a Pavlov's grandchild, right? I mean, so so he he believed that everything can be explained by by experiments you did and reinforcements you received. Okay, and uh, uh, it's he's influenced by by Locke's tabula rasa. Tabula rasa is Locke's theory that when you are born. We have completely blank slate, okay? So, you know, and, and basically experience and, and, and interaction with others uh, start writing on this black slate, uh, blank slate. Uh, then Skinner made the mistake of generalizing his, uh, his theory to language, okay? Now, he's, now he, all his theory is completely discredited, you know, as extremely simplistic and so, you know, and replaced by much more sophisticated theories. But what exposed him is uh, that he ventured into language, okay? And also ventured into language uh, when Chomsky already had his PhD, okay? That, that was his fatal mistake, okay? You know, so, so, <clears throat> so basically he said, why do we learn how to speak? Because when we, when, we try, when we learn the word cookie, we get more cookies than if we don't know the word cookie. And, uh, and uh, if we, tell, if we are, learn how to tell our mother that we are hurting, uh, we get more attention, okay, you know, and so on, you know. So therefore, there is a huge, huge, uh, uh, how do you call it, uh, reward to be better in language, and so you become better in language, and that's it. Okay, there's nothing more to it. Uh, and of course, uh, you know, uh, verbal behavior went a bit too far. Chomsky's devastating critique is far better known and accepted than the book. Okay, so, so Chomsky, in contrast, believes that language is in innate. Okay, I mean, you know, and. John Locke, in my, in my take, okay, I have not read, read his book, but I read about him, did not intend tabula rasa as, as, as uh, sort of literally, so you know, as you know nothing, we come with no instincts, nothing, nothing, nothing. Uh, he meant it uh, sort of, you know, more in a moral sphere, okay, that, that, uh, that, uh, that uh, uh, sort of our environment imprints on us, so, you know, the important parts of our behavior. In any event. Uh, uh, that language is innate, that you are born with the ability to uh, uh, do language, okay? And if we believe that that thing here is, uh, is language, it's obvious that you are born with some, you know, a very unusual, very formidable kind of hardware in that, in that, in that area. I should, I should have pointed here. Uh, enormous gap between stimulus and competence. That was, that's one of his main arguments. And it's, it's the, for perhaps the most controversial of his arguments that <clears throat> uh, 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 we learn language. I mean, sort of, you know, uh, absent uh, 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 pathologies, we learn language very well. Okay, well, you know, you know, maybe we are very good in very few things, but we all we are all very good at speaking. Okay, you know, sort of, you know. We speak better than Google Translate. You know what I'm saying? You know, we, we, you know, than any machine. Okay, so so that's that's something to be proud of. Okay, you know, but the point is that there is huge competence, and this is by spending uh, two years with a sp speaking person, sort of, you know, and 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 trying to understand what they're saying and imitating them. Okay, so so there is poverty of stimulus. That's how that's how he put it, and wealth of accomplishment. Okay, you know, in other words. Uh, now we know that uh, that uh, you can learn with, with with poverty of data. Okay, so so this this uh, this argument has come under under attack by uh, by people in the light of, of the of the machine learning revolution. Okay, uh, <clears throat> grammar is innate and universal. We are born with the rudiments of grammar, and the same rudiments of grammar are everywhere, and a child born in the Amazon, if raised in Bangalore, 
will speak perfect Canada. Okay, so you know, and there is no, there is no, uh, there is no doubt about it. I mean, you know, it, it, it has happened again and again and again. Uh, what else? Uh, children. Okay, so principles versus parameters. Okay, when he says that 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 that, that, that grammar is universal, means that there are some extremely basic principles which have been have becoming in the linguistic theory more and more uh, uh, fewer. Uh, and other than that, you just have to tune in the details. Okay, so basically, if uh, a Japanese boy uh, is sort of born not in Japan but but uh, but but in England, uh, he will have to tune the parameters diff differently. Okay, There's, you know, it has the same structure. But he will tune different parameters and he will speak perfect English, Oxford accents, everything, okay? So, uh, uh, and what makes us different? Why, I mean, no, so the, 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 the uh, long debate, other animals speak, right? I mean, no, so uh, donkeys uh, uh, speak, okay? So, you know, you have heard them, you know, uh, 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 birds sing, okay? That's, songbirds are, are very important. Uh, cousin of ours, okay, so, you know, shares a lot of the things, but, uh, uh, so, I'll, I'll sort of, I'll sort of tell you, tell you more about this, uh, it is, what makes us different is the recursion in infinity, in other words, uh, that we are able to string things with, uh, to, to, uh, to uh, hierarchies of arbitrary, arbitrary depth, okay, people say, but we never nest more than three sentences, because then we are not Okay, we are not, we are not uh, uh, understood. Frankly, uh, I have one thing to tell you. You should watch Chomsky speak, okay? Because Chomsky nests 10, uh, you know, opens 10 parentheses and closes them meticulously, okay? You know, so, but, you know, and he's, uh, he's 90, 91 or something. I mean, you know, so, uh, uh, but forget that. I mean, you know, uh, different argument. Uh, uh, who told you? That when I when I'm talking about hierarchies, I mean sentences. When I'm talking about hierarchies, I mean plans and stories. Okay, these are the important ha sentences. Are the are sort of you know the, the 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 tip of the iceberg. They are the things we speak. Okay, who cares about that? You know the real the real the real interesting thing is our hierarchical stru the stru hierarchical structure of what we are. Okay. That we have a story about ourselves. Okay, so you know, I, I mean, uh, okay. So uh, and uh, what what you know, as as I'm going to tell you, uh, uh, Chomsky and language theory has influenced computer science a lot, and a lot of computer scientists here may think that linguists basically their main tool is grammar. Okay, and that's false. Grammar. Linguists used for about three years after Chomsky invented it, okay? And then it was sort of, it was abandoned. Grammar, so you know, is only used in very specialized uh, sub, part of sub, uh, sub, uh, sub areas of linguistics. And linguists think that grammar is nothing. So, you know, that basically there is only one thing, and they call it merge. The Chomskyans call it merge, okay? The ability to take two things and create one thing out of them that embodies the two and communicates very closely with the two. Okay? To take two sentences and make them into a more compound sentence. To take seven sentences and make them into a story. Okay? To take ten sentences and make them into a complicated plan. Okay? Okay. Uh, language universals. That's a great. Uh, that, that's that's a very powerful argument for uh, for uh, for uh, Chomsky and theory. All language has vowels, consonants, pronouns. Okay. Okay. Maybe you'll say because we are all humans and have the same uh, the same the same vocal cords. Okay. Fine. Uh, Greenberg uh, came up. You know, uh, Joseph Greenberg, a great linguist, uh, came up with forty-five linguistic universals. Find them in the in the Wikipedia. They're amazing. Okay. I'll give you number thirty-one. If either the subject or object noun agrees with the verb in gender, here's what it says. Okay, first of all, there must be languages. I don't know if any of you know any such language, and I'm sure that about a dozen languages are spoken by people in this room, or maybe 40. 
uh, uh, there are languages whose verbs betray gender. Okay, the verb form tells you if the actor or the or the or the or the or the uh, uh, patient is female. Anybody knows a language like that? They exist. Hindi. Okay. <laughs> all right. Okay. Uh, so, all right. Okay. I should have known that. Uh, subject. Uh, sorry. The patient or 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 agent. Uh, which which of which of the two it agrees with the patient with the subject or the object? Sorry. The subject. Okay. 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 Good. So you know there are others that follow that agree with the object. Okay. Apparently, he says then the adjective always agrees with the noun of the in gender. Okay. You see what I'm saying? That that I uh, you know. I'm, I'm sure that it holds in Hindi because 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 I'm sure that that Greenberg spoke Hindi. He spoke he spoke uh, 90 languages. <coughs> okay, uh, so uh, 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 here is another one. So there are 45 universals. Okay, and now sort of you know the Greenberg uh, published them again, sort of you know slightly modified, and now that now they have found about 70. Okay, so so there are some rules that are quite complicated, like this one, and sort of you know don't they don't uh, you know they, they 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 are throughout languages. Okay, uh, I mean this must mean something. Here's another one. Tell me, you know, I don't know if you know this this sentence. This is a joke. There are no green small dragons. Okay, there are small green dragons, but there cannot be green small dragons. Okay, because the color in English. And I believe in every language comes, you know, that the that the that the correct sequence of adjectives comes from the very subjective to the very objective. Okay. The very the relative to the absolute. Okay. So you know something is either green or not green. Let's say. Okay. But something can be small relative to what? Okay. Relative to a cat, it is huge. Okay. But relative to 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 a, to, to a real dragon, it's small. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so, so there is. I mean, no. The, look, look, look at look at this. Also, sort of, you know, in the web, there are uh, <coughs> there is a lot of linguistic discussion about that. We know there is there is a sentence with uh, with uh, with something like uh, ten or twelve or fifteen uh, uh, adjectives before 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 the noun, and <coughs> the author argues that this is uniquely correct. And so you know it's it, uh, and with uh, small changes, it's it's translingual. Okay. <coughs> All right. So what's the grammar? The <coughs> uh, grammar is the following. Okay. So most of you know, but but let me go through. A sentence is a, is an I agent followed by a verb followed by a patient. An agent is either Alice, Bob, Chris, or David. A verb is either loves, hates, collects, or enjoys. P is either children or jewels or animals or toys, okay, and uh, and so this is a recipe for uh, for uh, uh, for creating 64 or uh, sorry uh, 256 uh, how do you call it different sentences, right? You see what I'm saying? Four to the four, two to the eight, 256. Okay, is this clear? Uh, this means can be, and this this is or. And can be this followed by this followed by this. All right. So this is this is a finite language. All right. This is a grammar that produces. This is called the context-free grammar. Uh, the sentence generate start with s. Keep replacing symbol in the current string with the right-hand side of a rule that has a symbol on the left-hand side until no such possibility. That's what that's. And this way you can you can create uh, you can create uh, these uh, 256. Uh, uh, sentences. Is everybody with me? Any questions? Yeah. Of this what? Be uh, before. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, that's an empirical observation that they are universal. 
Okay. Uh, have you seen uh, Arrival? It's a film. Uh, see, yeah. So you know there can be you know in in the science fiction authors' minds there are many kinds of languages that don't uh, don't don't abide by these universals. Okay. The arrivals, uh, very briefly, is about ali aliens who arrive and speak by by tossing uh, a, a, a liquid on 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 you know in a circular form on a on a uh, uh, on a screen. Okay, so you know, and that's their communication. And uh, humans, you know, uh, the greatest linguists in the world try to try to find out what they mean. Okay, so and they do. Okay, so in any event, all right, so. But as I told you, what, suma, what humans, uh, uh, this one is not recursive, right? I mean, no, in the sense that you cannot, you know, you only, you only have infinite many. This has a recursive, okay? You can say, Alice uh, loves children and Bob hates jewels, okay? You know, and that's, that's, uh, uh, that's, a, that's, a, that's a sentence. That's a more interesting one. Uh, Alice said that uh, Bob uh, hates uh, animals, okay? So, um, uh, right? Uh, and, uh, or maybe Ellie said that Bob said that Ellie said, Alice said, and so on, you know, uh, and, and, and so on, okay? Uh, so, these are, this is infinity, incidentally. Uh, uh, there is, uh, there is, uh, there, uh, uh, there is a tribe in the Amazon, which basically, uh, uh, somebody called, uh, I forget, uh, you'll see him soon, uh, sp spent 50 years of his life uh, uh, living with and decoding, sort of, you know, he's the first one that uh, lived with them and was not killed, okay, you know, so, 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 uh, he, uh, he, uh, uh, and basically, they have no color words, no number words, they only have, not one, you know, few, which means, uh, which is basically context dependent, it either means few, five or less, or two or less, and uh, more. Okay, so so that's uh, more than few. Okay. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, okay. Um, and uh, more importantly, uh, something that came as a bombshell: they have no recursion. Okay. Uh, uh, they say something like, um, uh, uh, I broke uh, a chair. The chair belonged to my father. My father had got it. In other words, they, they, they link uh, very, very implicitly full sentences, okay? So, you know, instead of saying, I broke my chair's father, which, and so on. I mean, so, so you know, they, 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 don't have, they don't have recursion. And, uh, and, uh, 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 and uh, this has been debunked now, okay? You know, uh, uh, Chomskyans got, you know, the non-Chomskyans triumphed. This was, this was viral, sort of, you know, it had, it had uh, 1,000 re uh, references in, in one year. And then uh, the Chomskyans sent an emissary to that tribe and, and uh, sat with them for a couple of years. He said, yes, they do, okay? So, so and, and that's, that's, that's what people believe now, okay? So, all right. Uh, Sorry? They have recursion, yeah. They have recursion. Uh, yes, uh, Daniel Everett is, is the guy who claim, made the claim. And so we know, it's, it's this guy. Uh, okay, forget about universality. How about exclusivity, your question, okay? How do you know that we are the only people who have, who have uh, okay. Uh, we have songbirds, uh, you know, I don't know if you know the story. But after Noam Chomsky uh, uh, claimed that, 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 that only humans is sort of exclusivity, uh, researchers at Columbia adopted a chimpanzee, which they called Nim Chimsky, okay, so, and, try, and, and tried to teach him to, to speak. And, and, uh, 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 and, and uh, it was sort of uh, uh, ludicrous. I mean, there, there is this, uh, the terrible results. Uh, Coco the gorilla is a more recent experiment, and Coco the gorilla can uh, can sign, can sign very convincingly, except can signs in random order, has no grammar. Okay, I don't know if you know, but sign language has uh, amazing grammar. Okay, has has very rigorous, very, you know, and there are probably I don't know how many sign languages there are in India. Okay, but but I mean, you know, there are there are 
more language, more sign languages than there are languages. Okay, because because for example, Australian and 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 and, and American is different. Okay, so okay, so Coco uh, so and frankly, okay, here is my point of view. If in order to show that Chomsky is wrong, you have to work with a gorilla for forty years and teach the gorilla to uh, 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 sign in a very flawed way, 10 sentences, Chomsky is right, OK? <laughs> OK. Um, all right. So uh, <clears throat> songbirds are an interesting case. Uh, there is a lot of analysis of that. Uh, there is a lot, you know, there is a huge, there is a chapter on songbirds on, on the why only us. And uh, the linguistic verdict by Chomsky and non-Chomsky, as well, you know, who clashed on the subject, is that uh, uh, songbirds have uh, uh, a very sophisticated uh, song, uh, but it's it's regular. It's not context-free. Okay, it's it's not it's not you know. In other words, it has uh, repetitions, uh, but not uh, but not uh, sort of context. Okay, so it's 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 something that you may understand in a couple of slides if you don't know what it is. Uh, so songbirds, by the way. Uh, they they share with us many things. <clears throat> they have they have their brains are completely different because they are not mammals. They have a lot of things in common with us. Okay, so you know that are different from from uh, from other birds, uh, with uh, with especially our left brain, and uh, also they have the following in common with us that there is uh, one month in the in the male songbird's life that uh, he can learn how to sing. Okay, and his father. Uh, works with him many hours every day to teach him how to sing. And if his father is uh, sort of uh, negligent and doesn't do it during, during, during this, this month, the, 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 he will never sing and will never mate. Okay, so that's... Uh, so the father has a lot of uh, in, uh, incentive, okay, to, to, uh, to do that. Okay? Uh, at least evolutionarily. Okay, good. Um, so, I mean... That's uh, that's uh, that's uh, that's uh, the slide about your, your question. So you know about are, why is it only us? Uh, so one amazing thing that Chomsky did is uh, so a short story. Uh, uh, he um, he came up with a Chomsky hierarchy. Okay, this means that he uh, there are there are four very important uh, categories of languages uh, of grammars from. Uh, from uh, uh, weak to very strong, uh, regular or right linear. It means that uh, it can be recursive, but the capital letters, which are the only things that caps, only caps occur in the left-hand side, okay? Uh, so uh, capital letters occur only on the right end of the right-hand side, okay? That, that's called, they're called right linear, okay? And uh, the next one is context-free. No such, no such, uh, 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 restriction. Context sensitive, the right hand side is no shorter than the left hand side. Okay, that's, that's, that's the only, that the right hand side should not be shorter than the left hand side. Other than that, do anything you want. In general, anything goes. All right? And, you, and basically, the, 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 the rule is try to find a place where a left hand side occurs and replace it with the right hand side. If you cannot find it anywhere, you're done. You have generated a word in the language, okay? And uh, the question is, you know, computer scientists got a lot very, very obsessed with that. They, they thought that the Chomsky hierarchy is the greatest thing on earth. So during the 60s, the Chomsky hierarchy, which I believe was in 1958, during the 60s was like dominated the agenda, the research agenda of theoretical computer scientists. I mean, if you, if you, look, if you look at the Fox and Stock proceedings then, they are more than 50% uh, about the Chomsky hierarchy and automata and so on. So, so the right linear grammar, so what they, what they did is they came up with machines to, course, to go with that. And for example, the right linear grammar, uh, uh, one way reading finite, so basically it's about uh, finite state machines, or if you wish, grep expressions, okay, for those of you who know Unix. Uh, better than computer science theory, okay? Uh, so, uh, uh, one way reading finite states, for example, this is 
a language that can be, in other words, say A or B, for, continue with two A's, and then do as many as you want, including zero sequences that are either BB or AB. Okay, that's uh, this, is, and that's and 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 this automata can recognize such languages. Okay, uh, but not this. Okay, because it's finite states, they cannot count. Okay, and if they cannot count, you can if you have two hundred A's and two hundred three B's, they will not be able to tell the difference. Okay, so uh, so that's. Uh, uh, that's uh, that's that's the lowest level of the hierarchy. The next one is context-free or phrase structure grammars, like this, correspond to non-deterministic push-down automata. And finite states, one way reading, like finite automata, but also can look at and modify the top of a stack. <laughs> For example, this one can be uh, recognized, palindromes can be recognized, but not, for example, most embarrassingly, for something that uh, that, that, that has the ambition of, of, of capturing language, they cannot recognize the repetition. If you put two sentences together, I mean, you can't tell if, if, if you did. Uh, and uh, all this, okay, to repeat this trick three times, they're dead. Okay. So, uh, and then comes the next one, which is, which is context sensitive. It's non-deterministic Turing machines that run in linear space, called linear bound automata at some point. Uh, they can they can recognize this. They can recognize that uh, the ones that that context-free languages cannot, but they cannot recognize this one, which is M. M is a program that uh, will not hold, okay? Because that's a very difficult problem, <laughs> okay? And then finally, the general unrestricted grammars correspond to Turing machines that accept by halting. All you know, decision problems solved in quotes by Turing machines that reject by computing forever, okay? Imagine, imagine, so you know, you had an oracle, but every time the answer is no, you know, so, you know, uh, you ask a question, you wait one day, you get the answer yes. You ask a question, if the answer is no, you don't know if you waited enough, okay? That's arguably the worst uh, 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 computer human interface, right? I mean, you know, I, have, I cannot, I cannot think of a worse one, or can you, okay? <laughs> All right, so, uh, in any event, uh, that's the story, regular context-free, uh, log uh, linear linear space and recursively enumerable and uh, uh, then we started asking the interesting questions does uh, non-determinism make a difference for regular algebra no even though the asterisk says that the state of uh, states get exponentially higher the goddess languages yes it makes a difference in non-deterministic space we still don't know in recursively enumerable languages it does make a difference and the point is that the p versus p question is extremely close to this. Okay, so in some sense, you can see, you can say that that uh, uh, the Chomsky hierarchy gave us a lot of practice in order to go to graduate to the real problems. Okay, so uh, uh, so auxiliary push down automata. So here is here, you know, for for those of you who are in theory, I, tell me if you knew this. Okay, because I think I uh, that's that, that's an amazing fact. Uh, Cook. In 1969, two years before he started MP completeness, wrote a paper in which he said, "Let's uh, let's uh, equip push-down automata with log n additional storage. Okay, you know, a small tape that has log n. This way, the states become exponential, become polynomial. Then what happens? If it's deterministic, well, he proved it's the same as p. If it's not deterministic, he proved the same as np. Without tape, we can prove that p is not equal to np." With tape, can we prove it? Okay, that's that's uh, this is this is sort of you know the seat. This is the start of many attempts at proving that p is not equal to np in my time. Okay, you know so so uh, uh, in any event, uh, uh, the Chomsky hierarchy, tremendous influence on CS, much of the research agenda in the 1960s TCS helped us understand how to write compilers and trained us for the real problems to come. Okay, and, and, but now. Uh, 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 let me let me let me finish. So you know I'm, I'm close to the end. So so I'll I'll, I'll break my tradition and not 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 uh, uh, stop for a break, unless you want me to. Unless there is popular demand. So this is our the language hemisphere. That's that's uh, that's what we want to study. That's what we want to understand. Uh, there is an amazing experiment. So uh, by the way. Here is something else I have not told you. The mirror, the mirror neural system, okay? 
the mirror neural system uh, is something that we and the higher apes have. Uh, uh, but basically, uh, it helps us understand the actions and intentions of others. Okay, basically, it tells us. Uh, uh, it helps us. It helps in social intercourse, of course, right? I mean, so basically, uh, if you are a chimpanzee, you say, this guy is grooming me right now. That's good. It feels good. Uh, I can groom. Okay, so that, that's, that's only thought. Should I groom? In other words, you know, it basically gives you, gives you the, 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 the beginning of social interaction or, or this or, or, uh, this woman is throwing something. If I wanted, I could throw something also. Okay, I mean, or this guy is coming at me with uh, with with uh, with a club. Okay, you know what should I do? Okay, I can I have a club. Okay, you know, and so on. Uh, so so this is this is uh, 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 this is the the uh, this is the the, the neural uh, the, the the mirror neural system. Okay, it's unique to to higher to higher apes and uh, uh, in humans and primates. And a little in Songbergs, okay, here it is. That, that it is in Songbergs makes people suspect that uh, it's the mirror system, the mirror neural system that makes us so good at, learn, at learning language. Incidentally, here is something else that we know about the auditory system. That sort of, you know, you know about the party problem, right? I mean, the, 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 the cocktail party problem, that, that there are 17 people speaking, you hear everything, how? You know, occasionally we're able to say, to, to focus and understand whatever, what one person is saying. Okay. How, how do I achieve that? I mean, you know, there is, there is a lot of signal processing and, and AI that, and, and deep learning that has gone to, to, to solving this problem. Okay. So here is one thing that, uh, you can put a baby in an environment where there are animal sounds, there is weather sounds, there is traffic sounds, there, there are, there are household sounds and there is one person whispering. The baby will only listen to the whisper. Okay, so it has so you know we are extremely motivated to hear speech. Okay, that's uh, uh, in any event. Uh, so it seems closely related to language. For example, look where it sits, and uh, and uh, and uh, Lakoff and Corbalis have uh, talked a lot about that. Lakoff, especially George Lakoff, so you know. Uh, Chomsky and who cho hates Chomsky, uh, uh, believes that uh, has written and sort of now it's obvious, but he wrote it early that uh, that in some sense the speech system is a hijack of parts of the motor system. Okay, so you know that that language and, mo and motion are very similar, and 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 uh, and the language basically uh, uh, copied. Um, recapitulated motion. Okay. By the way, so here it is. I mean, oh, this text pulsates at four hertz. Okay, and the four hertz is, some, is a frequency that must be extremely familiar to you because your senses uh, work at four hertz. For example, my speech is at four hertz, not because I'm trying, but this is natural. All languages are in four hertz. Okay, that's that's called the theta rhythm. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. So uh, uh, on the on you know this is uh, 50 hertz. 50 hertz is uh, much faster. It's called the gamma rhythm. Is uh, how neurons spike. Okay, and and uh, and uh, notice that uh, that the, the ratio between gamma and and theta is a dozen. Okay, so uh, what can uh, you know? What's the significance of this? I mean, so but remember that number, a dozen. Okay, so by the way, the theta rhythm also is. The rhythm of our sentence, our communication with the world. Okay, so uh, uh, for example, your your uh, eyes uh, move at theta rhythm. Okay, so you know every quarter of a second or every fifth of a second they move around. Okay, so you know and and, and they make saccades. Okay, you don't realize it, but they do. Uh, okay, so uh, uh, let me show you an experiment. This is uh, this is a famous uh, cognitive scientist at, at NYU, and. Uh, he uh, he did the following. He created tapes, which uh, have in a very monotonous filter the voice repeat at four hertz, uh, single um, syllable words, 
but un unrelated, okay? And uh, he recorded from many dozens of patients, okay? So you, you have to, you have to uh, 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 have si feel sympathy for these people because what they hear is something like this, okay? Very monotonous, very monotonous uh, uh, voice. So, uh, and, uh, and uh, he was recording, and uh, then he did a Fourier analysis, and surprise, what he found is that there is a peak at 4 hertz. Okay? Of course. <laughs> because four times every second, they have to, they have to think, they have to think, what is he talking about? Okay? They, they, have to, they have to fetch the word. Okay, then he did the following clever thing. He did, repeated the experiment, except that every four words, they made sense. So, Okay? And then he, uh, he did the analysis, and guess what happened? There were three peaks. At one, at two, and at four. Okay? And uh, you have to think, what does it mean? Okay? It means that our brain does something different when you hear this, once every second. What's that? Obviously, it recognizes a sentence. But also does something different twice a second. What's that? Recognizes a phrase, because these, these sentences have the structure of a complete binary tree of four ribs. So, I really think that what happens is this. Okay? Uh, more to the point, uh, the reviewers, the five reviewers of the journal, finally had to agree that there is no other explanation that they can think of. This is amazing. Chomsky has been telling us this for 60 years, and we didn't believe him. I didn't believe him. I believed him a year ago, a year and a half ago, when I heard about this experiment. I mean, I, I, before that, I had, uh, I had uh, uh, lunch with, uh, with Chris Manning, who is, who is a, who is a non Chomsky and very non Chomsky and, uh, uh, machine learning person, uh, how you call it, NLP person, and, uh, at Stanford. <laughs> and I asked him, I had this burning question. I asked him, Chris, tell me, do you think we have trees in our brain? And he looked at me in the eye and he said, yes, I think we have trees in our brain. Okay, this and this experiment made me completely believe that this is what's happening. Okay, that, that something like this is happening. Okay? The question is the following, right? This is done by neurons, right? If, if it's done. The neurons go with a gamma rhythm, okay, 50, 50 hertz. Words happen at 4 hertz. The ratio is 12. This means that with 12 spikes, you can do something. What can you do with 12 spikes? I told you yesterday. You can project an assembly. Okay? So, here's a second, here's a second experiment. A little bit, a little bit, you know, three years ago. Uh, Franklin and Green at Harvard, they basically, with fMRI, they, uh, <coughs> they, uh, uh subjects listen to these sentences, pairs of sentences like this. The ball hit the truck, the truck hit the ball. Okay? And are you ready for this? Different areas of the, of the superior temporal gy gyrus, if you wish, Wernicke's area responded to track in the two sentences. So when the track is an object, the track goes to a different area than when track is a subject. So the, 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 the Wernicke's area is differentiated. Okay? It has a subject area and an object area, and I'm sure a verb area. In fact, the first area also responded to the track was hit by the ball, okay? So you see what I'm saying? That the ball hit the track, the track was hit by the ball. 
our, our brain is clever, okay? It says, forget the stupid passive, passive uh, form maneuver. The, the track is the object, right? So it's not exactly the, the subject, it's the deep subject and the deep, deep object that we are talking about. Okay? In any event, uh, by what mechanism could, can its three building space be carried out by dozens of spikes? And, uh, okay, so that's, uh, all right. Here's another, here's another, uh, another uh, uh, interesting, uh, basically, uh, they, they did the same fMRI and they read them a rather complex sentences. Uh, that's a poor example because, because people say, you know, audience usually says, yeah, the people here at Bill Gates and they get interested, okay? You know, here the, you know. but, uh, but I mean, no, this is, uh, they chose the wrong example to put here. This is over, over hundreds of examples, okay? You know, you, they get this is an average over many, over many, many sentences. So the point is that the more, the larger the tree that is being completed, the larger the activity in the brain. Okay? So that's another little evidence. So, you know, I find, I find uh, Pepper's evidence much more, much more compelling that something is happening like that. Also, Zaccarella Friderici, the, she's, she's, the, she's the author of the book I, I, I told you, <laughs> the completion of phrases and especially of sentences lights up part of Broca's area. So every time a sentence is completed, Broca's, Broca's area is, 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 is lights up, okay, fires. And, uh, <clears throat> and this must be what, this must be the frequency, the one frequency that, uh, that, uh, that, uh, that these guys are picking up. Uh, all right, so, uh, the, the, the Arquatum fasciculum, that's all you know, I've, I've, uh, I've talked too much about today, can you believe this? This huge, this huge white area is myelinated, in other words, it's ready for use. It is, it is offered for use at 20 months. 20 months, that's exactly the time when the baby has enough words and can articulate syntax. Okay, then, Wernicke's area and Broca's area need to start uh, 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 communicating. But what is the neural gadget that does all this? Let's consider assemblies of neurons. They seem to have got concept, concepts, presumably also words. They can be projected to other areas, they associate, intersect to reflect affinity, they can create trees by merge. For the, for the benefit of those who were not here yesterday, uh, I want to tell you what assemblies are. And I cre they can create trees by merge. So what's the assembly hypothesis? That there, there is an intermediate level of brain computation implicated carrying, in carrying out a higher cognitive function, such as reasoning, planning, language, storytelling, math, art, science. Assemblies are its basic representation, its main data structure. And what are its fundamental operations? And the assembly, the operations are uh, project, Forget this, I don't care about this right now. Merge and merge, okay? There are two others, associate and pattern complexity that, that are important, but I'm not, but I don't need for language, for this, for this aspect of language. So, and also we add co uh, control operations like activate an assembly, area read, read which area is lighting up, read which assembly is lighting up, and disinhibit, enable uh, uh, an area. They enable, uh, Want to, you know, these, these control are useful because they complete the programming language, they enable you to write meaningful programs. The overall system is Turing pro pro complete and only project and merge plus the control operations su suffice for Turing completeness. Okay, so that's, that's a summary of what I told you. And let me tell you something else. Merge is complicated. Merge is by order of magnitude, perhaps two, the most complicated of these operations. Here is what merge must do. Uh, it, first of all, it involves five, count them, uh, brain area, different brain areas. And has to coordinate carefully with five brain areas. Basically, these two have to fire at the same time, 
causing these already established assemblies to also start firing. These established assemblies create, start creating an assembly here, which, however, interacts with them. So this change, dance up and down, okay? And these dances, these stay put. And in the end, and we know this by only by simulations because it's too complicated to prove anything about it, everything stabilizes and you have a, you have a merge. In other words, this has, is, enervates this, this enervates this, this enervates this, and the same in the downward path. Okay? So, that's the merge. Uh, I believe the merge is so much more complicated than the other instructions that I'm willing to say all animals, all mammals may have all these operations except for merge. And that the merge had to wait for the, for the arquatum fasciculum to, uh, to, uh, uh, to, be, to be around. That's here. Uh, does it need enhanced hardware? Does the merge need enhanced hardware? And is this enhanced hardware? Uh, so let me finish by um, uh, uh, speculating about, um, about, uh, about language, okay? Uh, that's a brain architecture syntax for syntax based on assemblies. Okay. Uh, I talk to linguists about that. I mean, oh, my closest collaborator is Mike Collins. Uh, but uh, I find it hard to persuade them and him that parsing is not the important problem here. I think the important problem is generation. Okay? Because parsing is recent. Parsing is a reverse engineering problem. Generation. How do you see this picture and uh, you say that's a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a worthy fact and I'm going to create a sentence for it. And then you articulate boy kicks ball. Okay? To me, that's the, that's the magic. That's a miracle. That's a mystery. And how you hear boy kicks ball and the, and the image comes to your mind is interesting, but it's reverse engineering. Okay? Okay, that, that's my position, so you know, you, you are welcome to disagree. Uh, <clears throat> in any event, if we know how to do this, uh, I, think, I think we are done 70% of the way. And here is how it could be done. This is the MTL, okay? This is where memories are. We are pretty sure people know that that's where our lexicon lives, okay? We each one have about a few tens of thousands assemblies that stand for words here, okay? So, this is the superior temporal gyrus where, uh, where Wernicke's area lives. So, imagine that this is Wernicke's area. And it has a subject area, a verb area, and, a, and an object area. This is, 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 the, is the upper part of, of Broca's area where we know, that, we know that, uh, that phrases are formed. And this is the lower part of, of Broca's area where we know that sentences are formed, okay? Broca's area must, buy, must do many other things because many some very small parts of this area seem to be busy when, when we would speech, okay? In any event. So what happens when you see this, okay? Here is my, my conjecture. Now what happens is that, that uh, you see this and then you say, okay, that's an action. What action is it? Is it hitting? Is it pushing? Kicking, kick, kick, and you find a word and, uh, in your lexicon. And then you, you project the assembly to create a new assembly here that stands for the present occurrence of kicking, of kick, for the purpose of this, of this sentence. And then you say, child, kid, girl, no, boy. Okay. And, and you, and you, uh, you, you, uh, uh, you, do the same thing, and the same thing for ball. And then, in some order, and I was not even sure for this order, but I'm pretty sure that, that, that the verb goes first. Go, the verb, verb leads everything. Uh, intuitively, it's clear. They ride the, you know, these two signals, these two projections, ride on the, on the arquatum fasciculum to the upper, upper, uh, upper uh, 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 
uh, part of, of, of Broca's area and create a new, a new assembly here, which is verb phrase. And then these two, that's a merge. That's our first merge. And here's the second merge. Uh, a full sentence is complete. Okay. Okay. So, uh, much more is needed. Okay. Let me tell you what this, what I proposed here is not. Okay. I'm not saying that this is langu how language is done. Okay. I'm saying that this is, that assemblies, there is a way to implement the mechanical part of language, the plumbing of language. Okay. In other words, how to do the, the mundane data structure of language, nothing else. Language has incredible sophistication, okay? You know, how, you know, disambiguation. You know, there is a lot of, a lot of Bayesian, you know, uh, uh, reasoning. There is a lot of many, many other things that I don't know how, how they, and, but I'm sure one day we'll, we'll find out. But what I'm saying is that the basic plumbing could be done this way. Uh, the plumbing of syntax. Syntax has much more, and language has much more than syntax, okay? So, so um, uh, that's, uh, that's uh, what I forgot to tell you is that once you have that, then because this is merged and it has downward, downward uh, connectivity, uh, these, uh, these uh, in some order that depends on the training of the child. If he speaks Japanese, he will leave this at last. If he speaks English, he's going to, he's going to of the speaker, I meant. Uh, if he's English, he's going to, 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 to jump to this first, okay? So in some order, it's going to wake up these things, okay? And these are going to wake up methods for articulating them. Okay, you know, and, and, and we're going to say, boy kicks ball. All right? Excellent. So, um, so let me, let me conclude in slides, okay? So, you know, for the three lectures. Studying the brain is fascinating and bottomless, okay? You know, so um, uh, I, I've dedicated four years of my life to this, and I have only scratched the surface. Uh, uh, computation is a productive metaphor for, for studying the brain. It means, I mean that uh, you, are, you have an advantage when you th think about computation, when you study the brain. How does the brain work? Arguably, and roughly reduces to how does the brain compute? Okay. Uh, as neuroscience and CS grew last century, they often debated and cross-fertilized. Okay, and so I gave, I gave you a history of this. Deep learning is only one of the products, okay? Deep learning is certainly one of the products of this cross-fertilization. Cross but there are many, many more. Uh, uh, top neuroscientists recognize that progress in computa a computational nature is missing. And, uh, and I'm, re re I'm reading the quote from uh, Richard Axel, arguably the, the, the greatest uh, active neuroscientist, who said uh, to you two, three months ago, we did not have a logic, and I emphasize logic, for the transformation of neural activity into thought and action. I view discerning this logic as the most important future direction of neuroscience. Okay, so uh, uh, you you know, I I I you know he used logic. I'm happy he used logic. Uh, I I had uh, you know I have uh, you know could have used more computational term, but I'm happy with logic. Okay, you know, so you know I think he, he makes my point. Uh, the assembly hypothesis asserts that there is a computational system that acts at a level intermediate between the two com commonly used levels, the neuron and synapse level and the whole brain level. Okay, much of computational work on the brain is either in the neuron and synapse level or the, on the whole brain level. Okay, what I'm proposing is that there is a useful, crucial actually, intermediate level, the assembly level. Assemblies are large sets of neurons representing concepts, persons, words. They can be projected from one area to another. They can be associated to reflect affinity, coherence, similarity. Two assemblies can merge by creating a new assembly in a third area with synaptic connectivity to, from, to, to both of them, to and from them. They can help with building trees and in implementing language. Assemblies with projected merge and a modest control language can simulate an arbitrary and over k space bounded Turing machine. That sort of mathematical result based on, my math on our mathematical models. Language evolved to adapt to our brain. Cons consequently, it contains many of the brain secrets. The study of language intersected early with computer science, and it is in many ways computational itself. 
the promise of the interaction between brain science, science and linguistics is, is, is open-ended. Okay? And with this, thank you very much. <laughs>